Good morning and welcome back. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Java Math Library. It's going to do all the cool things we need to do with math using the methods that are built into java.math and the things we really, really have to know, the trigonometric methods, as well as the ones that are really you know, quite helpful to work with. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that. Again, we're inside our controller.java file and I'm starting from my start method again, just like always. This is the same project we've been working with for all of our other math videos and it's just been going out and commenting out the different versions I'm working with and using the keyboard.next line so I can press the enter key to split between the different sections we're working with. So as you can see right here in my start method I'm calling the need to know method then trigonometric and then the good to know methods as well so we'll go ahead and get started with this go ahead and hit the play button to get this going and see these methods you have to absolutely know in the Java Math API. These are especially helpful if you work in AP Computer Science A or CS 1400 or CS 1 or 2, whichever class you're taking Java with. These are the ones you really, really need to know. Trust me on this. They're helpful, they're important, and we want to make sure we have this. Um, first thing you want to do is if you want to actually point your hands at your stomach like this. So you can see right here, pointing my hands at my stomach, and it makes that lovely V shape. And what has a V shape in Mathland? That's right, absolute value. So math.abs is where we're working with that. And so math.abs, that V shape that we just showed with there, that's where you get absolute value. I know it's a really bad dad joke, but it works really well. It's an overloaded method. It can take either ints or double values, so we can have that happening. And so we can get that math of absolute value and just passing a zero right there works, but that's okay. And so we want to do comparisons next, and comparisons we're going to do when we're working with math.max and math.min. And so math.max and math.min are how you can compare values right there. As you can see in my code right here, I have guess one is some int, I'm taking math.random times 10, and guess two, another int of math.random times 10. I don't know what's inside them, but when I run this code, I'll figure out which one it is, is bigger, simply by sending it to the appropriate value of math.max or math.min. And then I'm sending another one with double smaller number. I'm going to say math.min. I'm just do a random call of math.random for both of those values. So I can simply just get some values with that. So we'll go ahead right here, press enter. And we have our comparison. The bigger number in this case was two, which means it was a zero or one for that other value. We don't know which one it was, but that's okay because this is just a demo. Especially when you're working with this, you'd be comparing, say, for example, the results of a method call. That's how you'd actually be using this to actually get something with that. So, of course, when you know actual values or something, or you're using, comparing user input, storing it in some variable, that's how you make those comparisons to make that happen. And so we're going to have that happen right there. Our smaller number, when we're passing those two random double values, is 0 0.10912228. Oh, yeah, that's tiny. So the other one could be anywhere in the range of between 0 up to, but not including 1. So we've got a large quantity of information that just has to be bigger than 0 0.109. And no big deal. So we'll go ahead and we'll get past that as well. And so explanation is handled with um, our two methods of math.pow and math.squirt. Pow? Squirt? What? I know. Um, this is a holdover from C when we didn't have the ability to use vowels. Not that vowels actually weren't a possibility, but let's just take all the vowels out so we can shorten the words down. I, I know, it's annoying, but that's okay. So math.pow can actually do everything you need to do because you can pass fractional values in there, negative values, so you can get one over anything or some square root with that by passing a decimal value in there. But you generally use math.pow for positive values and then math.squirt if you need a square root. That's all it can do though, is just square root. But it's squirt and it sounds fun, so hey, that's a great thing. And so we have a result of four raised to the 2.1 power is result. In this case, we have 19.4481, uh, some zeros, and then a four at the end. And the square root of three is 1.73205, da, 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 da. Okay, great, that works wonderfully. And the integer square root of four, I'm using, of course, a casting right here again, where I'm doing the parens around it, if you check my other video for that. And you can do the uh, cast of the result of math.squirt four, and so I get two on that. So otherwise it'd be 2.0, because that's what we're talking about when we're working with a square root as a double value. So that's what we're working with on that. And as you can see right here, I've got that keyword I'm putting on next line so I can go to the next step inside my code. So I'll click right here, press enter one more time, and we'll scroll down to our randomness. And so again, we already talked about this in an earlier video, but pseudo randomness is really important. Use it all the time in Mathland. And we're talking in Java land as well. And so we get the number with math.random. It gives us a random double between the range of zero up to, but not including one, aka zero square bracket with a one with a parens around it, because you can get that value when you're talking about ranges with that. And so we have math.random right here. We have 0 0.5779381, blah, blah, blah. And then we have a random int value, zero without a scalar, or if I don't um, properly cast it, I always get zero, because zero times everything is always zero. I know, it's great. However, if I pass it a scalar and do the casting on the outside like we should, we have right here math that times scalar. In this case, I happen to get a zero again. But hey, that's okay because it happened to actually work. So we're good to go. I run this again and give me a different value, but that's where we're at today. Okay, so we have our system value on that. It happens to be zero both times, but that's okay. Now let's go ahead and we'll go to the trigonometric functions. So our trigonometric functions are the ones we use when we're doing trig functions, aka we're working with, say, for example, uh, pre-calc, secondary math three, whichever class you have to be, and you're actually handling the, um, the sine, the cosine, the tangent. When you're doing stuff to calculate information about trigonometric or geometric progressions, uh, all that fun stuff. Also in calculus, too, when you're doing the identities, all fun stuff. And so we have, um, if you actually need to use a constant, one of the few really great ones in Java is math.pi. Hey, 
3.14 is usually good for almost everything you have to do for problems, but if you really need a real value, use math.py as the constant for that. And as you can see right here, 3.141592. Da, 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 da. Yeah, we're good to go. But we have our standard uh, trig functions of sine, cosine, and tangent. They all exist with just sin, cos, and tan. But we also have the inverse trig functions of arc sine, arc cosine, and arc tangent with a sine, um, a cos, and a tan on that as well. As you can see right here, we're working with radians as the value for that. So remember your unit circle, it's kind of a big deal. And so you can send it with by uh, doing the standard values of using math.py, divide it by a value, in this case six. So I can get my angle for that. We'll pass that as the parameter. And as you can see right here, I have uh, sine, cos, and tangent all graphed with that. So go ahead and press enter on here. And so my sine of, uh, of pi 6, aka 30 degrees, is 0.499994, which is rounding up would be a 0.5 where we uh, would see that. Arc sine, um, a sine on that is going to be 0 0.55106. Cosine and this. Now when we're talking about this, when we're converting between radians and uh, degrees, there's always some loss of information possibly, so we don't have a guarantee on that. And so we have the idea that there's a not totally exact value with that. And we also have the two parameter arctangent, aka atan2. And this is really good when you're trying to calculate, for example, the angle of some supplied parameter in this case. But notice how the um, direction on this, it's y comma x. This is something that you really wanna make sure you're actually per, uh, sending this when you're looking at the idea of getting the tangent or the theta of that angle. And so you use the y value first, not the x. Something you have to actually remember with that, but that's the two ta uh, the two parameter um, arc tangent. Um, per, um, yeah. That's the two parameter arc tangent function, which returns the angle of that. So we're working for that. So you have that information right there. And we'll go ahead and next line again. And you can convert from degrees and or radians or two degrees from radians, etc. But there is some precision loss. You can't have a guaranteed value on that. In this case, I have my math.py in degrees is 90, has a perfect example with this, and the results radians is 1.570. Uh, so if I, I get that answer with there, we check that out. It'll be somewhat close to that. We don't have a guaranteed value that we have a perfect example for that. So just as an FYI, keep that in mind. It's not going to be perfectly precise because, well, it's math. I know. It's fun. Okay. So we'll go ahead and switch this again one more time. The next thing we have are our functions in math that are useful. They're not exactly you gotta know them, but they're really good to know. And that's for ceiling, math, and <clears throat> that's for ceiling, floor, and rounding. Rounding works just like it did in elementary school. If it's greater than 0.5, it's gonna go up. If it's less than 0.5, it's gonna go down. Ah, okay, easy peasy stuff. So in this case, I have double smaller is 3.3, double bigger is set to 7.9. And so the rounded value of smaller is gonna round to three because of course it should. The ceiling, however, 3.3 is gonna be four because it always goes up one level up from that. The lower bound is floor where I go down. And so the lower round of 7.9, regardless of how high it is, is just seven. It doesn't round down, it doesn't cut, it just chops off that uh, decimal value, just like if you're converting to an int, FYI. And then of course we have logarithms. If you're working for your calc stuff on that, you're gonna use that all the time. And so logarithms are available in either base E um, for natural log, or you have base 10 with log base 10. And so we have right here, uh, log base two is 0 0.69, and log 10 of 100 million is eight, because there's eight zeros, easy peasy stuff. So we've got that right there. I hope this is helpful. I hope you see some great information you can use with this to work on how to go through Java math. This entire uh, set of functions, <clears throat> This entire pile of code is available on my GitHub repo, so go ahead and take a look at the GitHub repo for Cody Henriksen at CTEC. Uh, it's one of those public, re it's one of my few public repos I have, so you can use that to get information on how you can work with and get more information about using the Java Math Library. Hope this is helpful. Cheers, have a great day. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.